This is Mohammed Samour. While out searching for food, his family was killed by an Israeli airstrike. He found their bodies under the rubble. But Mohammed's story isn't an outlier. Since October 7th, Israel has launched massive airstrikes in Gaza, indiscriminately bombing civilians, destroying infrastructure, and denying necessities like food, water, and fuel. And Israeli leaders have made dehumanizing statements about Palestinians. The high civilian death toll has led some to accuse Israel of What we are seeing is a genocidal campaign. Genocide is often called the crime of all crimes. We're going to explore what exactly constitutes a genocide and why some experts believe Israel is guilty of it. The word genocide was coined in 1944 by this man, Raphael Lemkin, a Polish Jewish lawyer who fled the Nazi occupation of Poland. Lemkin combined genos, the Greek word for race or tribe, with the Latin suffix kide, to kill. And he developed the term in part as a response to the Holocaust. But during World War II and the Holocaust, genocide didn't exist as a legal term or crime. Despite this, genocide was used at the Nuremberg trials, during which Nazi leaders were prosecuted, to describe the atrocities that had been perpetrated against Jewish people, Roma people, people with disabilities, and other groups. The 1948 Genocide Convention defined genocide as any of the following five acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, killing members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. The first three are really applicable to the situation in, in Gaza. That's Asta Sharma Pokharel, a staff attorney at the New York City-based Center for Constitutional Rights. In October, the Civil Liberties Group released an emergency legal brief about Israel's unfolding crime of genocide of the Palestinian people. It's also suing President Joe Biden in a U.S. court for failing to prevent, as well as aiding and abetting, genocide in Gaza. When it comes to the first act of genocide, killing members of the group, and what we've seen in Gaza since October 7th is, of course, mass direct killings by Israel through bombardments, through airstrikes. At the time of recording this, Israeli airstrikes have killed more than 18,600 Palestinians. Most were civilians. And the magnitude of death, injury, destruction, and displacement is rising. Thousands are missing, and Palestinians are also expected to die from wounds, disease, and hunger as a result of the conditions Israel has deliberately imposed. But we've also seen a total siege on Gaza. A total siege on food, on water, electricity, fuel, medicine, which has destroyed sort of the basic infrastructure that Palestinians in Gaza need to survive. This conforms to the second act of genocide. While small amounts of aid have been let in at various phases, at no point has it been enough to meet minimum requirements for Palestinians in Gaza. On October 10th, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant announced, Since 2021, Gaza's water has been deemed undrinkable as it's contaminated with sewage and seawater, leaving most residents to rely on desalination facilities for water. But the cuts to Gaza's electricity and fuel have shut down these plants. Gaza's water infrastructure has totally collapsed, making many Palestinians turn to polluted seawater for drinking and bathing. According to the World Health Organization, a person needs between 50 and 100 liters of water per day for consumption and hygiene. In Gaza, Palestinians currently have access to less than three liters per day. And the food situation is dire. Nearly one million of Gaza's 2.3 million people relied on food assistance from the UN. Before October 7th, around 500 trucks carrying food, water, and other supplies were allowed into Gaza daily. But since then, that number has declined sharply. 
And when it comes to displacement, the UN estimates that as many as 1.9 million people in Gaza have been forced to flee their homes, and nearly 1.3 million are sheltering in overwhelmed UN facilities. At the UN shelters, on average, there are 160 people who share a toilet and 700 people who use the same shower. And all of these sort of underlying acts have clearly contributed to obviously serious bodily or mental harm to members of that group. Which conforms with the third act classified as genocide. In two months, Israel has dropped over 40,000 tons of explosives on the Strip. The scale of destruction is so massive that up to 60% of housing stock in the Strip has been damaged or destroyed. Take a look. This was Gaza before October 7th, and this is Gaza today. But is this evidence that the Israeli government is deliberately taking these steps with the intent to destroy Palestinians? Intent is really hard to prove. It's often the hardest, hardest thing to prove when it comes to the crime of genocide. And that's because usually when an actor is committing genocide, it's not admitting to it. Among genocide experts, there isn't a consensus on whether or not a genocide is happening or has happened in Gaza. In a New York Times op-ed, historian Omer Bartov argues that Israel's actions so far have not yet reached the level of genocide, but it is expressing genocidal intent. We have Israeli officials, including um, Benjamin Netanyahu, Yoav Gallant, the Minister of Defense, and others who are at the highest level of government admitting, uh, which is revealed by direct, direct statements by people who are making decisions um, about the attack and the, and the siege on Gaza. For example, look at what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wrote on X. All of the places which Hamas is deployed, hiding and operating in, that wicked city, we will turn them into rubble. I say to the residents of Gaza, leave now because we will operate forcefully everywhere. And take a look at this video of Netanyahu telling soldiers to remember a biblical story when retaliating for October 7th. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. In that story, God tells the Israelites, in revenge for ambushes, to go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. And it's not just the prime minister. Even the country's minister of infrastructure, energy and water got involved and tweeted this. All the civilian population in Gaza is ordered to leave immediately. We will win. They will not receive a drop of water or a single battery until they leave the world. The IDF have made absolutely clear that this is not about precision targeting, which the Israeli military is very proud of its, its prowess in this regard. But this is about whole scale bombardment with no care for targeting. That's Dr. Penny Green, founder and director of the International State Crime Initiative at Queen Mary University of London. And Dr. Green is correct. Israeli army spokesperson Daniel Hagari said that thousands of tons of munitions have been dropped on Gaza and that while balancing accuracy with the scope of damage, right now we're focused on what causes maximum damage. And I think this combination, both the specific intent and the underlying act, makes really clear that Israeli officials intend to commit a genocide in Gaza and that this genocide is unfolding. So just to recap, some experts say there's evidence that Israel's actions in Gaza may meet some of the criteria of the UN's definition of genocide. But some experts, like Dr. Green, argue that genocide needs to be examined beyond the scope of international law and the UN's definition of it. Genocide is a process. It's not simply a spectacularized act of, of mass violence, the kind we're witnessing in Gaza at the moment. And that the process of genocide takes place over many years and often decades. Scholars like Dr. Green have studied past genocides and found these common stages that led up to mass violence. Stigmatization and dehumanization. Harassment and small-scale violence. Isolation and segregation. And systematically weakening the population. Let's examine how each of these stages applies to the Palestinian territories. First, it's important to remember where this all started. The violent expulsion of 750,000 Palestinians from their homes in 1948 to create a state of Israel with a Jewish majority. 
Since then, high-level Israeli officials, including prime ministers, have openly compared Palestinian civilians to non-human animals. Israelis are being desensitized as to the humanity of Palestinians. And that's a, that's a, a, a tactic that the Israeli state has used for many decades, that the Palestinians are somehow dangerous, that they're all terrorists, that they are very different to the Jews. For example, in 1988, then Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir said, We say to them, from the heights of this mountain, and from the perspective of thousands of years of history, that they are like grasshoppers compared to us. And in 2016, Netanyahu said, In our neighborhood, we need to protect ourselves from wild beasts. They are fundamental features of every genocide that I've ever um, studied. The idea that you, you, you cast the target group that you want to eliminate in one way or the other. You, you target them, you describe them in a fashion that removes them from our world of humanity. Dehumanization has set the climate for everything that's followed. From 2008 to September 2023, Israeli forces killed over 6,400 Palestinians in the occupied territories and injured more than 150,000. That's more than one Palestinian killed every day. The Israeli human rights group Yeshdin investigated cases of alleged offenses by Israeli soldiers against Palestinians from 2017 to 2021. It found that less than 1% of these resulted in prosecution. Israeli soldiers have killed Palestinian medics and teenagers in cases that ended without accountability. In the occupied West Bank, Israelis living in settlements, which are illegal under international law, have shot at Palestinians, set fire to their homes, and destroyed olive trees. Israeli authorities have rarely charged or prosecuted settlers for these attacks, and sometimes even watched them happen without intervening. In fact, some international and Israeli observers have said that Israeli forces and authorities support and assist the settlers who engage in organized violence against Palestinian communities. Perpetrators find that if they can commit violence against the target population, such that they uh, are not punished in any way for that violence, then it becomes much easier to perpetrate more and more of that violence against the target group. And then comes isolation and segregation. Palestine and Israel, what we see is segregation in the form of apartheid physical structures, a massive segregation wall that not only segregates um, communities from each other, but it grabs land at the same time. As you can see here, Israel has been building a separation wall that has broken up Palestinian towns and provided protection for illegal Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank. About 70,000 Palestinians with Israeli work permits had to pass through checkpoints as part of their daily commute. And in Gaza, most people are refugees or descendants of those who were displaced by Israeli forces during the 1948 Nakba. Since 2007, Israel has also imposed a blockade over Gaza, fully controlling what can flow in and out of the Palestinian territory. Once you create a ghetto, of 2.2 million people, such as the Gaza Strip is, then it becomes very difficult for that population to carry on in a way that we would understand as normal. In fact, Israeli government documents showed Israel limited food to Gaza at just above the line of malnutrition. Though I have to say, the Gazans have a vibrant, had a vibrant, very vibrant culture, but if you imprison people, you restrict their life opportunities in very significant ways, politically, socially, in terms of their health, in terms of life opportunities. Reports have found Israel has failed its responsibilities under international human rights law by denying Palestinians essential health resources. In a 2022 survey, four out of five children in Gaza reported living with depression, fear or grief. More than half said they had contemplated suicide. So you systematically weaken a population, both physically and psychologically. And when populations are weakened in this way, systematically, uh, and in these segregated spaces, such as Gaza, it becomes much easier then to 
annihilate them physically. This is why Dr. Green says that all these stages contributed to the mass violence the world has been witnessing since October 7th. If we look at the, the 1948 Genocide Convention, if we look at international law which relates to that, that convention, and if we look at the sociological and criminological uh, empirical understandings of genocide, um, this is a genocide that ticks all the boxes. This is genocide. Israel is perpetrating genocide against the Palestinian people, and not only on the Gaza, in the Gaza Strip. This is a genocide against all Palestinians. However, it has been difficult for international legal institutions to hold Israel accountable. The International Criminal Court is a judicial body that takes on war crime cases like genocide accusations. Israel is not an ICC member and does not recognize the ICC's jurisdiction. On top of that, the UN Security Council's decision is needed to open cases on non-ICC members like Israel. The U.S., a permanent member of the U.N. Security Council, has vetoed over 50 U.N. resolutions critical of Israel and has opposed an ICC prosecutor opening a war crimes investigation in the Palestinian territories. And there are thousands and thousands of actions taking place involving millions of ordinary citizens who are standing up uh, against um, this genocide, who are demanding an immediate ceasefire, who are calling on boycotts of, of Israeli products. This is where I think the most realistic and most powerful form of accountability lies. 